Now, uh, Parliament is in recess, and you could argue that the most important political events of the week have played out on the streets of London and other major cities. Environmental protesters have been blocking traffic, gluing themselves to trains, uh, and generally causing disruption for four days. Uh, well, let's go to Waterloo Bridge now, where we can speak to one of uh, the movement's uh, co-founders, Dr Gail uh, Bradbrook. Uh, Dr. Bradbrook, I mean, what, what beats me about this is I can understand your climate change concerns. I can't see where this connects to disrupting the lives of ordinary people. I just encourage you to get the history books out, Adam, because you've got the vote, I've got the vote, because people did these kinds of tactics in the past. So we've been accused of causing economic uh, damage to Oxford Circus, for example. The suffragettes went along Oxford Circus and smashed every, sin every single window, and that's how come... Hang on, wait a minute. Uh, let's just stop this. The suffragettes had a clear aim, and the clear aim was to get the vote which is a way of expressing yourself politically. Uh, you are just expressing an opinion uh, about climate change, which you're forcing on everybody else. It's not the same thing. You're not campaigning for no, something we've got, specific. We've got, we've got three very clear demands, my love. We've, we're asking for the government to tell the truth and other institutions about the dire emergency that we're in. And that includes things like that this civilization could collapse and that scientific papers say things like there's a one in 20 chance of human extinction in my children's lifetime. That is more serious than anything humanity has ever faced. But those, it, look, those, issues, are, so those issues are out in the public domain already. All you're saying is you're right and everybody else is wrong. And for example, uh, we've got the whole question of uh, uh, cutting cars. Uh, now, there is an international agreement to cut carbon by 2050. You want to do it 25 years earlier. But that, that's a political argument. It's not a justification for inconveniencing everybody else. The, the carbon targets by this government have not been met and they're, and they're entirely inadequate. There are only, the carbon in this country is only being cut by 0.4% annually, so we're asking for something much more dramatic. The IPCC said there are 12 years to turn this around. Our um, targets, but, uh, 2025, no, but, but, no, are based on the precautionary the all principle. This, all this stuff, all these uh, claims about the government's performance, all of this is on the record. All of this is debated in parliaments around the world. And that does not require this sort of, you know, everyone having fun in the Easter holidays and coming uh, and interrupting the business of the capital city and capital cities around the world and bringing their children because they're on holiday as well. Listen, my love. The politicians of the world are not taking this into account. They are not taking the action. That's why you've got amazing people like Greta Thunberg in the European Parliament in tears, begging almost the politicians to actually do some action. I think but it's that's a, a exactly disgrace the point. That's, that the why, children, that's why we have an international climate change this. committee at the United Nations. That's why we have a Paris Accord. That's why politicians are putting it at the top of the agenda. That's why former Vice President Al Gore uh, campaigned on this issue uh, and, and won an Oscar and all the rest of it. All I'm saying is this information is out there and I just simply do not understand what you think you're achieving uh, by putting this particularly kind of, you know, and one does have to use the word fascistic disruption of other people's lives to make your argument. I, I'm sorry, I'm really not OK with you calling us fascists. I don't know what that's about, but that's up to you. Do you think the children are fascists when they're going on school strike? The, the, this current government has not even got a paper yet based on the Paris Accord. The targets that are there are not based on the Paris Accord. It was in 2015, four years ago. I believe they're about to do a paper in May. That's great. We know that social change doesn't happen unless people get on the streets and make their demands. So no, but we, by we, fascist, I mean, by fascist I mean that you think you have the right to impose your views like, on honey. everyone else's this lifestyle. Is democracy. And furthermore, you're not being fully open about what you're proposing, that people, for example, would have to give up eating meat altogether. Had your colleague on the show yesterday saying that by 2025, 
alive only in emergencies should people use air flight. This is actually dictating to people how they live their lives. It's not democratic at that, all. That's exactly not the case. No, our third demand is that we want a citizens' assembly, that is random people chosen by a jury service type of mechanism to say how the plan should unfold. So they will decide whether it's about meat or flight. The point is, it is going to be difficult, but the British people, we're amazing. We need to come together. We have to be clear on how bad this situation is. And we pull together in times of war. We will rise up and we'll deal with this situation because we love our children and we know that we've got to do something massive. And the politicians actually behind the scenes, including this current government, are telling us that they need a social movement like ours to give them the social permission to do the necessary. They haven't been telling the truth. We're telling the truth. We need people to focus on this emergency and we need really big action. Let's be clear about this. You're saying that government politicians are saying, uh, yes, we need you to come to London and uh, glue yourself to Jeremy Corbyn's front door or uh, to disrupt uh, the Docklands Right Railway or, or block Westminster Bridge. You've actually got government ministers, have you, telling you that's what they want. I'm, I'm giving you anecdotal evidence. I won't be able to prove that to you, but I've met a couple of people who've talked to Theresa May's... Um, uh, sorry, advisers, and they have said they do know how bad it is and actually they need you guys to help. So I think basically we're doing the job. It's, it's, the, we're in a disease system at the minute. You can see this almost like an inflammatory response. We have to do this piece. We will get off the streets as soon as we can, but we've got three clear demands and the government needs to come and talk to us. But you've achieved nothing because your demands are simply a statement of where the argument is on climate change. What you're achieving is uh, those scenes we're seeing behind you, as I say, of disrupting ordinary people and alienating ordinary people. Opinion poll today, for my, example, my love, shows that, yes, a third of people have sympathies with you, a majority, over 50%, disapprove of the way you're behaving. So you're alienating people we... from your very cause. We'll be releasing our own uh, public survey, survey that we did through an independent source. We've got different data than you have, but wait for that to come. I, I don't see how you can say we're achieving nothing. We've got the world's media looking at us. We're having this conversation that needs to be had. It's a really difficult conversation, right? When you're the, 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 we're in a six mass species extinction event. The dinosaurs was the one before. The Permian no, I, mass I, extinction, I, 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 when 97% percent of all life died. This it, it, I don't think, I don't think do using scientific it. jargon without a basis of evidence really helps the debate. But thank you for joining us. Well, one of the people uh, hoping to be a candidate in this European elections is...